Hey guys, it's Doc. Um, most of you know me as Lovable Terror, and tonight I have my wife Sam helping me film this. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to actually build mesh for your NX Cardo. Um, the best part about the NX Cardo is that you can actually translate a lot of this mesh building to quite a few Genesis or mesh type addies. Um, so with your next gens, your next tiny, and your next Asus, you can actually translate this to it as well. Of course, to any of the N-axis as well, because it's all center roll based. Um, I also use the same build for my K-Loud, just a little shorter. So let's go over what we're actually going to need. What we're going to need tonight is, of course, our NX Cardo the roll stick, our grip stick, the negative nut, pliers, mesh, and a motherfucking blowtorch. Because um, you're a pyro. I love using a blowtorch, a, a propane based blowtorch, because it gets so hot. You are welcome to use any type of torch you want, but just know that the lower the temperature, the longer you're going to have to oxidize. Um, some people are going to disagree with me on this, but to me, this, this does work quite well. And the best part is my work actually issued it to me, so I can use whatever I want. Um, all right, so what, what, what am I building this for? What I'm building this for is actually the billet box. Um... I'm actually rocking a billet box Rev 3. Uh, most of you have been asking for this because you're building for a billet box Rev 4. This mesh build will work for any of them. Or a Cardo tank. Or your next gen. Or your next tiny. Or your next Asus. So the, the biggest thing is, is to know that I'm going to be building a Supra Ohm build. I'm not going to be doing sub-ohm, I'm going to be super-ohm. So we're actually going to be building at a 1.4-ohm build so that you can run between 12 to 22 watts and still get a good build, a good hit, without any dry hits at all. Um, currently, Sam has been running the same build in her NX on a Billabax Rev 3 at 5 volts so 1.41 ohm build um, at 5 volts so she's looking at right around 17 and a half watts um, sorry that's that's actually her vape right there so what like I said what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be starting with mesh and eventually we're gonna be building it into the NX Cardo so what I like to start with is your postage stamp size piece of mesh. Um, I see a lot of people saying, oh, 19 by 15 or 19 by 16 or 19 by 19 millimeters. Um, that's great, but to be honest, this is the best measurement I've seen is postage stamp. Um, if you're looking for actual measurements, it's gonna be three quarter by three quarter inch because I don't use communist units. Um, so, like I said, we're gonna be using three quarter by three quarter, and this is 200 mesh. Um, 200 mesh seems to work the best for me. And what we're gonna be doing with this from the start, taking this postage stamp, and we're gonna be turning it into this. Um, the biggest deal is you wanna change the color of the mesh because that's gonna tell you that you've actually oxidized it. This is fresh, unoxidized mesh. This actually came straight out of the package. Um, I just got it about a couple days ago. So we're gonna take this little poster stamp size and we're gonna turn it into this. Um, the size isn't relevant on this one. This is the color that we're looking for. We're looking for oxidation and we're looking to anneal the solid stainless mesh. So what are we gonna do to actually get this color? What we're going to do is we're actually going to take our pliers here, right? And the biggest thing is you don't want to block off too much of the mesh because what you're going to do is you're going to invite 
too many chances for a hot spot later on. So you want to get the smallest point of a corner you possibly can. You're going to take your torch, and you're not going to be able to really hear me throughout this. So let's go ahead and show you what we're going to do. So, now I've gotten the color that I'm looking for, a dark gray. Um, I can go into the chemical analysis and all that bullshit, but that's not what we're wanting to do tonight. What we're looking for is a quick and dirty mesh build so you can get your atomizers working for you. So, what we're doing right now, after we've oxidized it, is we're going to go ahead and take it off of our pliers. Be careful touching your pliers because they're probably pretty fucking hot. Your mesh, because of the air holes, is going to have cooled off. Now what you're going to do is going to go ahead and inspect the edges of your mesh. If you have quite a few long pieces hanging off of it, you're probably going to want to go ahead and take your scissors. And you're going to go ahead and just trim it, just lightly. So I'm trimming the edges that have some, some sharp points just hanging off of it. And the reason why is because after I roll it, those sharp points have probably not oxidized properly. And after I'm done dealing with them and rolling, we're gonna end up seeing quite a few hot spots in the areas where those have been. So after we're done trimming, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab our pliers once again. And you want to start from the same spot that you were in before. And you're going to reoxidize. The reason you're going to do this is because of your finger oils. Um, your finger oils can actually cause shorts. Um, uh, I've seen it before. I know I'm probably going to get some scientists in the comments that are going to say, oh, that's not going to happen. But to be honest, they, they will cause it. You will get some issues. And you're going to be brushing your, your wire quite a bit trying to get those hot spots out when all you need to do is oxidize your mesh a little bit better. So after we've gone ahead and done that, we're going to re-oxidize. Again, you won't hear me, so let's go ahead and take care of this. Alright, so we've re-oxidized. We've taken care of any of the issues that we would have had after I've been handling it and taken care of, you know, any, just any little bits of things. Um, a lot of people are going to say, well, you're going to handle it while you roll it. But that's going to be minimal and you're going to re-oxidize it anyways. And this is just an extra precaution to take care of it. So we're going to go ahead and take that mesh. Because of the fact that mesh has so many air holes, it's not going to be as hot. And then we're going to take a roll stick. So if we take a roll stick, and the biggest thing you want to make sure you do is you want to start off even. When you start off even, your roll is going to be much, much, much smoother. So you want to try to get the smallest portion you can to start with. All right, and once I've folded that over, and I roll it, and, and I'm sorry for anybody who's not a stoner who never rolled their own cigarettes, but this is quite a bit like rolling a joint. You're going to pinch and hold and fold. Um, so really, all you're doing is you're pushing forward. So let's, let's try that again. After we've pushed that little piece down, we're going to fold it over, and we're going to just roll. And we're going to hold tight. You want to make sure that you hold very tightly to it. Because the, the biggest thing is, is if you don't, it's going to unroll on you, and you're going to have all sorts of unhappy feelings. Um, like Bob Ross said, uh, you're going to have happy little trees if you get this done. Um, I want you to have some happy little mesh. So... After we've rolled it, that's what you're looking at. And 
at this point, a lot of people say, well, you've oxidized your mesh and you're done. You're not done. You're, you're not. Um, you've got quite a bit ahead of you. So let's go ahead and dive straight into how you're going to prepare this mesh to be fitted onto your Annex Cardo. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take some throwaway juice. Um, some people would use the juice that they already have or anything like that. But Sam and I are kind of poor and we enjoy the juices that we have and we don't want to waste it just burning it off. So if you're like us and you just happen to enjoy the Hemo and the Authentic Life and you want to use a throwaway juice, that's good. Make sure that you pick something that's high VG, minimal PG, because it's not going to burn as long, it's not going to crackle or spit, and it's going to help you oxidize this mesh just a touch better. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're using Tart of War from Gate City Papers. And we're going to run it along the mesh. So if you notice, as I'm running along the mesh, it actually is not soaking into it. Um, that's actually going to be fixed a little bit later on. And what we're going to do, after we've run that along the mesh, we're going to get our pliers back out, grip our roll stick, and grab our torch. Once we grab our torch, we're going to go ahead and set it on fire and let it burn. Once we let it burn, we're going to torch it again. Now if you notice, as I'm burning it, I'm rotating. What I want to do is I want to get an even burn on this. So you notice that it's glowing. Once you get that mesh glowing and you've rotated it, go ahead and test how well it's doing with wicking. Once I've touched it to the bottom there, you notice that it actually shoots straight to the top. When it shoots straight to the top, most people would say, okay, it's done. Well, I like to go just a step further. And when we go a step further, we're going to actually do it about seven more times. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and take a break. Um, and I'm going to let you go ahead and take care of this. Get done what you need to get done. Get a drink if you need to. Take a vape. And then we're going to come right back. And I'm going to show you what we're going to be working with after you've done the oxidation and torching seven times. All right? Okay. All right. So, we've oxidized our mesh, we've got it on our roll stick, and again, if you have a Next Gen or a Next Asus or a Next Tiny, um, I actually don't own any of those atomizers, I don't know if you actually have a roll stick. Um, the best thing you could possibly do is maybe take a clothespin or, um, you know, just something sharp, pointy, and can withstand heat. And that's what you're going to roll around. So we've, we've oxidized this seven times. What we've done is we've taken a little bit of juice. We've dripped it on there. And if you notice now, it's absorbing pretty much every bit of that juice. And after we've done that, we've gone ahead and burned. We've gone ahead and burned all of that juice off. And now we have this very, very nice looking piece of mesh. So what are we going to do with it? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and slide that off of our roll stick. We're going to set our roll stick down. And we're going to take our mesh. And we're going to take that mesh and slide it over the center piece of our anax. If you notice, it sits very low on there. Um, a lot of people always like to try to build it high or make sure that it's just high enough. Um, you really don't have to do that. And once it's sitting that low, you've got about half the roll stick showing in the center pin there. You can just pull it up because you're still not seeing anything through the juice flow holes. You're not going to get any flooding. So, what are we going to do here? After we've placed that over there, we're going to take our 30 gauge Canthal, 
Um, you're welcome to use 28 gauge, but just know you're going to have to use more wraps. Or if you're using a DNA 40 or DNA 25 Rev4 billet box, um, you can use less wraps, but to be honest, I've noticed that I, I get way better um, response and, and vapor and flavor out of a 1.2 to 1.6 ohm build um, using 30 gauge canthal. So we're going to go ahead and undo that. So let's undo this. Again, I'm, I'm not a professional at this. Um, I'm actually kind of horrible at this. And I'm really sorry for how badly this is filmed because we're filming this on a phone. Um, but I made a promise that I would do this and that I would get this done. Um, because, like I said, I got a lot of questions about this, so let's, let's go ahead and get this pulled out. Alright, we have that pulled out. Let's get our wire snippers here. And snip. Alright, so we have our 30 gauge here, and 30 gauge is about the max you can use with the small grip stick as they call it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and feed this wire through your grip stick. So we've got it fed through our grip stick there. And we're going to go ahead and place it on top of the Anax Cardo. And just kind of twist it a little bit. You know, get it, get it, get it on there tight. It, it's a little bit of a tough fit. You can straighten out your canthal to have it shoot straight out. That way you're not, you know, wrinkling or twisting it too much. But once the Anax is giving you a little bit of resistance with the grip stick, you're good to go. So take your mesh and just push it up. So once it's pushed up, you know that it's it's meeting the bottom of the canthal. And you know that you're, you're still going to have a nice full juice window that's filled with mesh. And all you're going to do is you're going to take your 30 gauge and you're going to lightly wrap. You don't want to pull tight. I, I see too many people, they pull real hard and they wrap hard. Like they're wrapping a coil for their dripper or something like that. Um, when you do that, all you're doing is you're choking your mesh. Um, your mesh is no different from cotton. If you were to wrap really hard and tight around cotton, what you're going to see is, you know, a, a dry hit. You're going to see tons of dry hits. So what what I should be able to do is take this inax. I should be able to take this mesh. I should be able to slide it through my wraps. So all I'm doing is just lightly pulling on the 30 gauge and just wrapping. So I've wrapped it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull it through this notch. All right. So we've got it pulled through the notch. We're going to take our negative nut. We're going to put this down over the NX itself. So we're going to screw this down. And you might need to pull this over a couple of times because it does like to float over while you're, while, you're, while you're screwing it down. So after you've done that, you're going to take your snips. Um, I like to use a, a little tiny pair of fingernail clippers. What we're going to do is we're going to get up real close, as close as we can because now we have no overhang. 
and then we're going to take the top of this. Now, to me, this is very important because I see a lot of people, they'll just clip it and say, fuck it, we're done with it. I like to take the top of this, fold it over, and bend up at the bottom. So we do have some overhang right there. Um, after we've had that overhang on the grip stick, we're going to trim right up next to the grip stick. So we do actually have our overhang right there. Um, it might be a little hard to see. Um, I know the camera's not really focusing on it very well, but we are overhanging on the top of the grip stick there. So the next thing I'm going to do, um, we're going to take a DNA 200 E Fusion, um, just really anything with a 510 connection. So if you don't have something that that is um, adjustable wattage. You could take a uh, old Ego or an uh, or a uh, Vision spinner. A anything that you can just kind of play with the voltage on. And what I like to start at is 10 watts. So we're going to start at 10 and a half watts on that. And we're going to go ahead and press the fire button. So the fire button tells me we're at point. 6.2. I know that with 8 wraps of 30 gauge, we're, we're definitely way above a uh, 8.62. So we know that there, there needs to be a little bit of work done. So what you're going to do is at 10.5 watts, you're going to fire your coil and you're going to look for hot spots. So if I press this button, you see that it's glowing down here. Well, obviously, that's not glowing the rest of the coil, so what we need to do is take a flathead screwdriver or anything that's flat and you can push with. And you want to see what you can get out of the coil. So coil standards dictate that you want an inside to outside burn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush on this just a little bit. All right. And you may notice some, some heavy pops. You may notice some very, very bright spots. As you notice those bright spots, brush and push. And what you want to see is that the whole thing glows together. So you notice that it's all of that's glowing together. Um, and it may take some time. As you go, you brush. The more time you put into it now, the less time you'll put into it later trying to fix it. So you see as it's, it's glowing all around that mesh. All right. So that's at just 10 and a half watts which is a 4.15 volts at a 1.64 ohm build. So we're going to go ahead and crank it up just a touch. Let's, um, let's put it at 14 and a half watts. So you see, it's still just glowing quicker. There's no hot spots. Everything seems to be doing quite well. So a good little trick to make sure that it's wicking well is to drip some juice. through your wick hole and after you've done that press it if you notice I'm getting vapor coming off of the actual cardo so obviously we've done something correctly here um, we know that we're glowing evenly and obviously we're catching fire but if you look at how the cardo itself is glowing 
you'll notice that it's actually glowing inside to out. We've got a nice even flow on there. And we have plenty of mesh in here for me to flow juice to, to go up to the coil. So let's go ahead and put the top on this. So we're gonna put the top on there. And after you've put the top on, a lot of people say, okay, well, we're done, we're done. No, we're not done because you put the top on there, you have adjusted the negative portion. You've added another piece to the negative of the cardo. So what you're gonna wanna do is press the button again and make sure that you don't have any shorts because if a piece of this is shorting on the tube, your resistance will change. And obviously our resistance has stayed steady at 1.64 to 1.66. So we're gonna go ahead and take it off of our DNA here with our 510 connection. And we have our fully built cardo. So my next step is to take this cardo and we're going to go ahead and place it into our boro. We have a, a standard Rev3 boro tank. And I'm going to take a little bit of Vape Belly Mandarin Mango because I'm a huge fan of this juice. And we're going to juice it up. Um, I don't like to really squirt it. So we're going to go ahead and... I was about to say, just pour it in there. Pour juice in there. We're gonna wet the O-ring. And we're gonna close it up. So we've we've juiced up our borrow tank, we've juiced up our cardo. Everything's looking really, really solid. But the problem is you're about to put it into a billet box, so you know that there's gonna be an issue. Um, there's always something. Something's gonna go wrong. Um, something is gonna be an issue with you putting your billet. So we're gonna take our brass ring. We're gonna place our brass ring on here. And I'm gonna take the end of my ceramic tweezers, but you can take a penny or a dime or a quarter, just not a nickel because they're really fat and they're gonna end up bending your uh, your brass ring. So we're gonna twist that in there. We're gonna get that nice and tight, right? And I like to start at the lowest possible voltage. Now those of you with a Rev4, um, try to figure out your math if you can, but you're looking at about nine watts on a 1.5 to 1.6 ohm coil. We're going to place our drip tip on there. And at 4 volts, we're just going to take a real quick little tube. And we got really nothing off of it. Mm -hmm. But we know that we're getting fire because if I press the button, I'm getting a crackle. But at 4 volts, with this high of a resistance, I'm not expecting a whole lot. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and up it to five volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the door back on the billow box. So we slide our door back on. We wanna check to make sure that it's firing. We know that it's firing. And what I like to do just after building fresh mesh with a fresh coil, there's not a whole lot of carbon built up to, to, to keep an extra layer, lever or layer of resistance on there. I like to cover the air holes and take a couple of little dry puffs. And just pull some juice into that cardo. So once you've pulled the juice into the cardo, you're going to go ahead and take a couple of puffs. So we take our couple of puffs and we enjoy. You really don't need a video to tell you to enjoy your billet box. So 
I hope you enjoy it. I hope this video has been plenty instructional. I hope that my wife has filmed it well. Um, if not, um, divorces is, are incoming. So, uh, just let me know. If there's anything else I can do, or if you have questions, or really if you don't have the time to build your uh, Genesis, go ahead and send it to me. Um, you can send me a PM. I'm user lovable terror on Reddit, or you can go ahead and send me a PM on here, or you can send me an email, lovableterror at gmail.com. Um, I'll be happy to help you out, get your mesh built, and I'll get your Addy working for you. Um, more than likely, Sam's going to end up using it for about a week just to make sure that it's working okay. So just let us know if there's anything we can do for you. We're happy to help. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is Lovable Terror. Have a good night.